Frank Lloyd Wright described it as the very first human expression of a tall steel office building as architecture. Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are looking at the 10-story terracotta masterpiece known as the Wainwright Building. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode of This House. The Wainwright Building is considered to be one of the first aesthetically fully expressed early skyscrapers. It was designed by Denkmar Adler and Louis Sullivan and built between 1890 and 1891. It was named for local brewer, building contractor, and financier, Ellis Wainwright. Wainwright needed the office space to manage the St. Louis Brewers Association. It was the second major commission for a tall building won by Adler and Sullivan Firm, which had grown to international prominence after the creation of the 10-story auditorium building in Chicago. As designed, the first floor of the Wainwright Building was intended for street-accessible shops, with a second floor filled with easily accessible public offices. The higher floors were for honeycomb offices, while the top floor was for water tanks and building machinery. Aesthetically, the Wainwright Building exemplifies Sullivan's theories about the tall building, which included a three-part composition, the base, the shaft, and the capital. This was all based on the structure of the classical column and his desire to emphasize the height of the building. He wrote, The skyscraper must be tall, every inch of it. The force and power of altitude must be in it. The glory and pride of exaltation must be in it. It must be every inch a proud and soaring thing, rising in sheer exaltation, that from bottom to top, it is a unit without a single dissenting line. Despite the classical column concept, the building's design was deliberately modern, featuring none of the neoclassical styles that Sullivan held in contempt. The ornamentation for the building includes a wide frieze below the deep cornice, which expresses the formalized yet naturalistic celery leaf foliage typical of Sullivan. And published in his system of architectural ornament, decorated spandrels between the windows on the different floors and an elaborate door surround at the main entrance. Apart from the slender brick piers, the only solids of the wall surface are the spandrel panels between the windows. They have rich decorative patterns and low relief, varying in design and scale with each story. The frieze is pierced by unobtrusive bullseye windows that light the top floor. One of Sullivan's primary concerns was the development of an architectural symbolism consisting of simple geometric structural forms and organic ornamentation. The Wainwright Building where he juxtaposed the objective tectonic and the subjective organic was the first demonstration of the symbolism. Unlike Sullivan, Adler described the building as a plain business structure, stating, in a utilitarian age like ours, it is safe to assume that the real estate owner and the investor in buildings will continue to erect the class of building from which the greatest possible revenue can be obtained with the least possible outlay. The purpose of erecting buildings other than those required for the shelter of their owners is specifically that of making investments for profit. Upon its initial completion, the Wainwright Building was popular with the people and received favorably by critics. In 1968, the building was designated a National Historic Landmark, and in 1972, it was named a City Landmark. The Wainwright Building was initially rescued from demolition by the National Trust for Historic Preservation when the Trust took an option on the structure. Later, it was acquired by Missouri as part of a state office complex in the St. Louis Landmarks Association. In one of its early victories, is credited with having rescued the Wainwright Building from a construction project. The neighboring Lincoln Trust Building, later known as the Title Guarantee Building, designed by Eames and Young, built in 1898, was demolished to make way for the Gateway Mall in 1983. Carolyn Toft, Landmarks Association's executive director, stated that this building formed an ensemble with three other late 19th century commercial buildings, including the Wainwright Building, that could not be equaled anywhere else in the country. Saving the Wainwright was important, but how much more important it would have been to save the entire group. Architect John D. Randall, led an extensive letter writing campaign to the governor and other noted officials. The campaign resulted in the restoration of the building as a state office building instead of its demolition. After a period of neglect, the building now houses the Missouri State Offices. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about this landmark. I want to extend a special thanks to our members whose names you can see on the screen right now. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.